Well, how do you two, Bunky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse? Pay no attention to that Lenovo box under my thumb. You'll have to wait and see what that is. Today, we're going to talk about a media center and why do you need one? A dedicated media center, I should say. Do you need one or is it just way too much to devote a single machine to Plex and MB and your music and all that other stuff? Well, stay tuned. We're about to find out together. So, you know, I built Prometheus and I've done several videos on my Plex slash MB server. So for the sake of clarity, let's just say when I refer to Plex, I'm referring to my media center, okay? Plex and MB, sharing out my videos, sharing out my audio pictures, that kind of thing. And I've dedicated a server to it. Now, the other thing I did was I put its own dedicated storage on that server as well, Prometheus, that would be, using Drybender. And you know how I love Drybender. The question is, is do I need to dedicate an entire machine just for Plex and MB? Uh, just to, you know, stream video to my Roku's. I mean, there's only two of us here. And usually when we watch a movie or a TV show or something like that, we're watching it together. So it's not like we're, we're doing multiple streams. The, the problem comes in is even though power is cheap here in the United States, we pay on average, well, I pay about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So power is not that big a deal, but I hate being wasteful. And, you know, a, a big media center machine consumes, you know, at idle about 60 watts. And when it's streaming, uh, or sharing a video about 100, 120 watts, depending on how yours is configured. And I see all these videos around with people running, uh, well, let's just bite my bits, we'll take him for an example. He gets 10, 15 streams running, or 7 streams, I think, running off of a, a Synology disk station. And, and I'm just, I sit around and I wonder to myself, how does he do that? Because I've never been able to successfully stream that many, not that it matters, I don't need that many streams, but... Even getting one stream to go reliably on Plex or MB on my DS918 is a challenge. And I had when I ran it on the Synology, I had nothing but trouble. That's one of the reasons I built my dedicated media center. Now, I typically 9 out of 10 times use a Roku to stream my videos. I have a combination of Roku 3s. I think I have the Roku, uh, I don't know, I have a, the small one, the Roku 3, and then the one above that. And then my TV in my bedroom has Roku built into it, and it's a, it's a modern 20, 2020 TV. So when I rip my videos, I rip them natively. In other words, if I have a DVD, I just use Make MKV, and I rip it in its native format, which is MPEG-2, uh, and rip it into an MKV file. Same way with a high-def movie. I like the, the good picture quality, and I have plenty of hard drive storage space. So a lot of people run their videos through handbrake. I don't do that. It's an extra step. It's wasteful, time-consuming, and I like having the native format. So with the high-def movies, again, I just use Make MKV. It rips them into their native uh, HEVC or VC1 format and uh, uh, their native audio format, and I just save the 23 to 35 tera or gigabyte file to my network, and I share them out via Plex or MB to my Roku's. Now, I also have the ability to stream on my TiVo, but I don't, I have a separate Roku device in the living room, and I typically don't use my TiVo to stream because it's not a good, uh, it's not a good streaming device. Let's just put it that way. Now, I like to keep all those audio, video, and photos separate from my work NAS. So I have my MCS NAS, which is my Synology DS918+, and then I have the Drivebender share on Prometheus. And I like Drivebender because it allows me to choose by directory what stuff I want to mirror and what stuff I just want a single copy of. And then I back everything up to the Synology NAS just as an extra safe measure. And then I have an offsite backup that I use as well. Now what I could do is just put Plex and MB on one of the, on the say for example, this Dell R720 I just purchased a few months ago. It's got a entry it's got a low-end uh, grid video card in there but therein lies the problem in order to get a modern day video card to work in the Dell R720 it's a huge pain in the rear end and you know I could just run it on there and save power because I'm virtualizing just about everything else I run 
on that Dell. But again, I want to keep this stuff separate from my work computers. That's why I built Prometheus. That's why I dedicated it to, uh, to running uh, Plex and MP. Now, so I went over and, and looked at Bite My Bits videos again and a couple other uh, creators on YouTube and how they get these multiple streams working. And I found something amazing that they leave out, and that is subtitles. And therein lies the issue. When you turn subtitles on, normally a video that would not have to be transcoded, i.e. could be streamed natively, suddenly has to be transcoded. And that's where the issue comes in. So, if you're old like me and getting hard of hearing, uh, or like my spouse, who's also hard of hearing, just won't admit it, you tend to view movies with subtitles on, just in case you get distracted by something so you can see what the dialogue is. And a lot of times in these movies, they crank the volume way up for the sound effects, and the dialogue volume is always so damn low it's hard to hear or hard to make out what they're saying depending on their accents. So just about every movie I watch with my spouse or even alone, I have to have subtitles on. And if you notice on some of these videos where they're saying we get 10, 7, 20, 100 streams on a Synology device, there are no subtitles turned on. Now I rip my videos with subtitles in them natively. I don't use anything like open subtitles or any of the add-ons to to Synology or to Plex and to uh, Ambi that they have available. So keep that in mind. Your mileage may differ, but for me, when I turn the subtitles on, my Synology and As just can't handle it. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about because the proof, as Joe likes to say, is in the pudding. So let's go eat some pudding. All right. So standard definition movie plan. On the Synology NAS, it's direct playing to the Roku. I believe that's a Roku 3. And then over here on the NAS, you'll see that uh, if we go into Task Manager, we'll see that Plex has got very little impact on the performance of the system. It's only at 0.05%. Now, the next thing I want to do with the uh, NAS is I want to play a high def movie. So let's see what happens when I play a high def movie. We use Guardians of the Galaxy. And we'll play. So let's go ahead and fast forward this. Let's go ahead and get into about, oh, I don't know, nine or ten minutes of it. So there we are, can't play much of that. And as you can see, the Plex Media Server is now up to 14%. And you can see it is having to transcode both the 1080p H.264 and the AAC audio are both being transcoded uh, using the hardware on the Synology NAS. Now, I want you to watch closely to what happens if I turn on subtitles. Now these movies have been ripped with the subtitles in them natively. So I should have PGS, yeah, English PGS subtitles available. So if I go to turn them on while trying to play it on the Synology NAS, and this is one stream being played on the Synology, not multiple, just one. It takes much longer to load the video, and this is what I get. So, welcome to the wonderful world of Plex with English PGF subs. And you can see it is transcoding in hardware the video, and the audio is transcoded by a software. I assume that's what that means. And our usage is up to 29%. So this is what happens if I try to use Plex and then you look over here on the screen you can see that it is stopping and starting the playback and it's just a hot mess. Alright, so here's Prometheus over on this system.
and then um, here is it's called jukebox the, the name of the server is called Prometheus but under Plex it's called jukebox so let's uh, let me go back to the left monitor so you can monitor um, you can see Plex is sitting there waiting for something to do something all right so let's connect to jukebox which is basically uh, Prometheus and we'll we'll try the same movie here uh, we'll come down to Guardians of the Galaxy and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna well let's let's compare apples to apples let's see what happens with the uh, standard definition movie go ahead and play it and I think you'll see it's responsive and etc 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 so let me get through the titles here get to some action spots and yes uh, you know we got a good standard video let's come over here and you'll see we've got a direct play on the jukebox uh, both in the audio and the video playing standard definition at H.264 so let me come back over here there we go now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward you see how much more responsive it is just in the in the interface so if I'm playing a high def movie here okay so there we go got a great picture it's working just fine and look the subtitles are even on so let me turn them off because I want to give this a fair a fair appraisal here there we go we'll turn them back off go ahead and let the movie start playing again all right, so let's come over here to my machine. And so a high-def movie, uh, you can see it's consuming about 8% CPU, 6 to 8%. If I come over to Chrome, you'll see that it is transcoding in hardware, uh, both the uh, H.264 and the AAC audio, although the AAC audio, it appears to be transcoding in software and not hardware. Again, Plex Media Server, and now it's down to less than 1%. Uh, the transcoder is up to about 2 Yeah, you know, jumps back and forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, turn on subtitles and see what kind of effect that has. So I'll go ahead and turn on the subs. English PG, PD, PGS, I should say. Turn that on. And I'm going to go ahead and try to fast forward to another part of the movie. Okay, so there's our subtitles on. Again, we're streaming this all off of Prometheus or the jukebox. So you can see now that our Plex transcoder has jumped up to 11.712%, 13%. And that is because we have now enabled subtitles. And they have to be dealt with. So if you come over to Plex, you'll now see that the 1080p is transcoding in hardware. The AAC is still transcoding in software. And now we have English PGS subtitles turned on. We'll come back to Plesk, or we'll come back to Prometheus on the actual server. And you can see there the uh, Plex transcoder is kicking in. So there you have it, folks. Uh, there's the difference between the two uh, servers playing a video, both a standard definition and a high def. Wasn't that some delicious pudding? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. But you can see what I'm talking about. So everything seems to run fine as long as you don't turn subtitles on. I could even do multiple streams on my Synology NAS. Now, I haven't tried it on the FS1018 because it's not hardware accelerated on that unit. Uh, but it is supposed to be on the Synology on the DS918+. Plus. But subtitles are just a different beast. So now I could alleviate this by going and taking my videos through handbrake and re-encoding them and double it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not, hard drive space is cheap. The only reason I used to recompress or recompile my videos in handbrake is because hard drive storage was expensive and, you know, per terabyte. Now it's, it's so ubiquitous. It's so cheap. It doesn't make any sense to re-encode the videos. And in fact, Plex will do that for you. It's built into Plex you can have different copies of videos. So if you're streaming this to your phone, you know, you can you can recompress the video ahead of time so that Plex doesn't have to transcode. Now, the reason I built Prometheus was for that very reason, because we tend to watch all our movies with subtitles on and 
the Synology just couldn't handle it. Now, I have a GTX 950 in Prometheus, and it handles the load just fine. But as we're moving forward and videos are starting to come out in different formats in 4K, I want to make sure I'm prepared for the future. So the question is, do I need a dedicated media server? And in my case, yeah, I really kind of do. Uh, but I'm starting to rethink that. Now, in Plex and MB and everybody's defense, I have not tried open subtitles. I, you know, I've heard bad and good about open subtitles. I haven't tried it. Uh, there are some alternatives uh, to using for using subtitles on Plex and MB, uh, and I'm researching that. But uh, you know, it still leaves you wondering. You know, why do you need a dedicated media server? Well, this is one of the reasons why. For us old folks, I've just got to have subtitles. So in the end, I think it makes sense to have a dedicated media server. It just gives you so much more flexibility, and with 4K videos coming out. You know, it really makes sense to have a, a dedicated media server with it. Uh, yeah, I see her sneaking around. She's trying to find out what's in that Lenovo box right there. Nothing like a little promo by my dog. She better not be peeing on my floor, Maddie Mae. Anyway, uh, yeah, so in the long run, I think it makes sense to have a dedicated media server. But we're going to revisit this because uh, this is a two-part video. Part one, I wanted to explain to you what I'm using now, why I'm using it. But part two, we're going to go into some alternatives to a dedicated media server, and I'll tell you what I ended up coming to the conclusion of. And if you're sharing your library with other family members or friends over the Internet, it really helps to have a, a high-end unit with a powerful video card in it. Um, you'll be much happier in the long run. Now, I'd like to know your opinion on the subject, so please leave your comments down in the comments section. If you run Plex or MB, let me know what your experience has been what kind of specs you have. I think others would like to know what it is uh, or how you have your system configured. So now you're probably also asking, why do you also run MB? Well, it's called the spousal acceptance factor. I like Plex, the spouse likes MB. Why? Well, I like Plex because it just works and it's, you know, I just like the interface. The spouse likes MB because of bios, biographies, something Plex doesn't offer, or at least I haven't figured out how to turn them on. In MB, you can go in and see a biography on the actors and actresses, and for some reason, my spouse finds this, that he can't live without that information. So keep that in mind when you're choosing between Plex and MB. And there's no reason you can't run both, if you so desire. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. Please leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We take PayPal, we take Patreon, and... You can subscribe directly through YouTube for $1.99 a month, which will recur monthly. Now, keep this in mind. Those of you that donate to me on Patreon, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're making most of these videos possible uh, because it does cost money to keep this channel up and running and get products into review for review and that kind of thing. So if you're subscribing on Patreon, they just got sued. So keep in mind, uh, it doesn't look good for Patreon. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, shift that over to YouTube if you don't mind. Uh, all you got to do is click the Join button, have a credit card or uh, something other, uh, you know, some other payment method on file with YouTube, and bing, bang, boom, you're good to go. And I do appreciate all of you that subscribe. Come back and see us again, and please don't forget that we will see you on the other side.